Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. 2023, interesting year because a lot of uh, financial issues there. Um, banks have a problem. We're talking about recession. Financial matters really matter to a lot of e-commerce merchants. So we want to dive a little bit more into the topic on how you can fund your business if you want to grow or if you need help with your cash flow. So therefore, I have Piotr Pizas on the show. He has a, a huge background when it comes to financials. He also worked at Google and was a venture capital investor in funds like DN Capital and FinTech Capital. So let's welcome Piotr to the show. Hi, Piotr. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Piotr, tell me a little bit about the situation out in the market. Um, I touched on it. What's happening? What's the biggest problem right now for e-commerce merchants out there? I think... Um... E-commerce businesses are having a bit of a difficult time today. And this is caused by several issues. First of all, uh, you know, a year ago, year and a half ago, we've seen a huge issues with logistics. And e-commerce businesses were forced to buy much more inventory than they would normally, just because, you know, the, the cycle to get the money from, get the goods from China or anywhere in the world to Europe or US were uh, so long. Secondly, the people had a lot of disposable income. They were staying home. They were buying a lot of goods. And finally, the third uh, issue that happened recently is uh, we had a lot of change in the ads algorithm. Apple introduced uh, the, the famous uh, iOS tracking thing where, you know, it's much harder for the, uh, for the companies like Facebook and Instagram to track users. And this made the ads much more inefficient. So first of all, we have, you know, much increased cost of acquisition, lower demands, and more inventory on the hands of uh, retailers. What meant the perfect storm? Well, they all have a significant cash flow issues. This combined with now general issues with the economy makes it a really, really difficult time for a lot of retailers, direct-to-consumer businesses uh, across the globe. Yeah, we don't want to scare people away. E-commerce is still a great business, but you need to get your ducks in a row. Now, having your finance, finances um, sorted out, very important part, looking at the right KPIs. Now, I know um, from my own history, going to a bank and asking for money is not the easiest task. Well, luckily enough, um, nowadays, there are other solutions to that. So you came up with a way to help merchants on the financial side of things. Give me a bit of an idea where you started and what the idea is. We started almost four years ago with a mission to help entrepreneurs have easier access to the capital. I actually, as you mentioned, I spent several years in a venture capital industry before, and I met hundreds, even thousands of entrepreneurs who are coming to me as a VC to get money just to buy more inventory, buy more ads, scale our business. This is not the best way to you know, use your equity. You should have a better ways to, to grow your business. So we came up with a business model where the e-commerce company can come to Uncapped, connect us to their data. You know, We integrate directly with their Shopify engine or Magento. We go to their Google Analytics, to their marketing accounts, to their accounting, to their banking details. And we quickly analyze the thousands of parameters of a business. So you now we could, could, can quickly understand how fast you're growing, what are your margins, what's your cost of acquisition, how many customers are coming back, what are your returns. And if we like your business, within 24 hours, we can give you up to several million of pound, euro, dollar to scale your marketing, buy more inventory, invest in the team. Okay, I think that's a very good point that you mentioned there. If you go to a traditional bank and you talk to your banker and you tell them what you do, e-commerce business, half of the time they will not even understand what you're talking about. So that makes it very, very difficult to get a credit, a loan or any kind of money out of them. What are the KPIs that you're specifically looking for? For us, you know, uh, high level, what we're really looking at is, first of all, the growth of your business. You know, uh, are you able to scale the business? We really want to, you know, most of the companies we fund are still unprofitable. But, you know, we want to see the growth trajectory. We want to make sure actually there is a way, there is a time when we believe you will be profitable. Then we spend a lot of time understanding your margins. And this is, you know, we're looking how much... What's your, how much are your cost of goods sold? What's your gross margin? What's your CM1? What's your CM2? 
we want to understand you know how much it costs you for you to acquire a customer what's your payback period how many customers are returning just so we understand how these benchmarks versus your operating costs and at what point and when can you be uh, profitable we do a very detailed modeling so actually for every customer we actually have our own financial model built automatically where we understand their financials their cash flow gaps we understand their seasonality we know when are you when will you be making money when will when will you be burning money and we prepare the offer customized per, per, for customer which actually we will make sure that we smooth out your cash flow needs and help you grow mm -hmm. what kind of scenarios um, are merchants in when they approach you is it always a last minute emergency or is it more long-term planning how does that work the best clients we have it's a very long-term planning it's usually the phase when they see okay my business is growing i would like to now invest million two million three million in the growth of a company or maybe hundred thousand i actually have this new collection coming out there's a new season i need to pay my suppliers in advance usually you need to pay your suppliers now and you will get the money back in uh, three months five months four months so usually we are not the lender of last resort we are lender for growth businesses when they want to grow and we understand this we help them plan we prepare a flexible financing plan for them so they can draw the money when they need as they need them at a very low affordable rates okay tell me where's the biggest difference in, in simple words between you a venture capitalist a bank or any other, other financial institution venture capitalist will give you a lot of money by taking part of your company away from you and expecting the return within you know five ten years it's a it's a different type of partner allowing you to invest in very risky investments the banks take the least amount of risk first of all they usually have a security often in form of personal guarantee and other other charges they will offer you very very cheap financing usually uh, but it's usually available only for the best of the best companies I would say 99% of our clients there is no way they can have a bank financing and even if they can it's very limited we are the specialist lender focused on e-commerce businesses we really understand e-commerce all we do is e-commerce and we can offer the financing tailored to you available very very quickly also like the first first drawdown will be very very quick but also if ever you want money from us again it will be a very very quick process and uh, tailored to your needs we can make sure that the repayment is you know on a similar way uh, structure in a way but it works for your cash flows which we expect for you to have mm -hmm. okay you said you specialize in e-commerce now e-commerce has different areas you have your shopify store you have your SaaS business give me an overview of what kind of businesses within e-commerce you're working with frankly it's any kind of e-commerce on one hand we have small e-commerce store which are you know one person doing amazon sales with you know fifty thousand revenue per year per month uh or even less i think the lowest smallest customers are like you know ten thousand a month on the other hand we have businesses with 50 to 100 million turnover per year having you know hundreds of people and you know there we are a plan of their multi-year strategic plan these businesses today are planning for the 2024 and they are discussing with us today how we can fund their production this year for the following year uh well you know the small amazon merchant probably is like hey i can buy 20 000 pounds or euro worth of goods which i can sell with amazon as a profit can you quickly give me the money so as you can imagine very very different types of customers and very different solutions we offer to them okay what are the minimum requirements that are needed to apply um usually for the amazon merchants we expect you to have ten thousand sales and per month and three months of a history for the e traditional uh, e-commerce companies on amazon it's about fifty thousand monthly sales and six months of a history mm -hmm. what are the biggest issues that you see with merchants so basically where, where where do they struggle um the most so that they need money is there any specific that you can specific sure. points you can point out the I think there are two types of there are two types of companies needing the money there's company which needs the money because they grow fast 
and they need they have this working capital gap the faster you grow the more money you need because there's always this working capital gap and whenever there is another type of companies which have problems and they need the money because hey we're struggling when we see the company struggling it's usually the typical use case will be first of all too high operating costs i think it's very often that the companies overgrew especially in the last two years they have too many people employed they are too inefficient actual unit economics are decent but they never managed to find the way to to operate their company in a lean way and i think it's very very efficient then the, another typical problem is overstocking we have a lot of clients who unfortunately bought too much of the goods and have inventory which is not rotating it doesn't show in your PL because you don't sell it. It doesn't appear in your PL. But if you have, you know, a lot of money stuck in the inventory you can sell, maybe you can sell it, but it will take you one year, two years. This is a problem to you. And you know, they are really struggling to, to find a way how to get out of this inventory. And then finally, there are companies where the margins don't work. Maybe the business, you know, the goods are selling, but they can't they cannot charge enough for this. They have to, you know, lower the pricing. The, logistic costs are too much or cost of acquisition is too much and everything would be fine but they like lack this you know five ten or fifteen percent of a margin to make their business efficient usually it's driven by the inefficient marketing and you know they are trying to scale the marketing grow the business but the efficiency of the marketing is plummeting uh and it's becoming a a, a problem for them for the good companies usually the only problem is cash flow hey i have my product is selling i need more money Piotr, please give me 1 million, 2 million, 3 million for the growth. We love these customers. Okay. But I think you, our listeners have to re-listen the last three minutes that you just said, because in a nutshell, <laughs> that's what they need to work on. Um, if you don't have a lean business, if you have too much stock, look into it. That's I think that's a very good general guideline for every entrepreneur, for every business out there. Um, now, you are revenue-based. Um, so how does the repayment work? Give me a bit of an insight. To be very honest with you, we actually don't really do much more much uh, more revenue-based loans anymore. Uh, revenue-based is something that we started with, and we still you can, still can get it from us. Uh, and for the listeners, this means that you know the loan repayment is tied to your revenue. The, let's say we agree that you give us twenty percent of your revenue, and you repay the you know we get twenty percent of your revenue until you repay the loan. The funny thing is. Um, we realized some time ago that the customers much more prepare the fixed repayment schedule. And today, in almost every single case, we just give a client straight amortizing loans when we agree you repay us, let's say, 10000 a month, 100000 a week, or whatever it is. And we have this fixed repayment schedule, which allows the customers to have much more uh, certainty over what will be repaid and when. We're also now launching a new product where we give customers line of credit when they can you know, top up the loan amount up to a certain limit so at every single point of time, they can have you know, 100 to 100,000 million or two drawn from us and basically work on this flexible model with us to have money as they needed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you get money, it might affect your credit score. How does that work with your solution? Uh, we don't, uh, it doesn't affect your credit score. We don't report uh, discussion with us to the credit agencies or even taking the loan from us to the credit agencies. So there's absolutely zero impact on the credit score. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. What kind of timeline you said um, it can go very, very quickly? What's the process? What would be the first step for a merchant to get in contact with you? Uh, usually they can go to our website, apply for a, for, for, uh, for a loan, uh, connect the data to us. We'll ask them to schedule the call with our account executives, mainly because we want to understand their needs and tailor the product to them. Once we get the data from the client, we'll prepare the offer within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're a solopreneur, you're on your own. If you have a small or medium enterprise, are there other parties involved? I don't know, like the accountant or someone who might help with the process? sometimes like listen the process is very straightforward and actually doesn't require much work we ask for the connection to the accounting data or having accounting data sent to us in one way or another 
most of the founders have is available. Uh, if they don't, you know, they can invite the accountants to the process, you know, or 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 help them help them with it. Usually, the process is really, really very straightforward, and we're not asking for much. We have several cases when the clients approach us in the morning and got funds dispersed in the evening. So the process can be very, very fast. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of listeners will love to hear that. Now, you have worked with thousands of funders. Are there any cases where you will not fund them or basically that you see a red flag where you would not be interested in? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, at the end of the day, we are lending business, right? So we have to be selective. We have to find out, we have to, you know, uh, in more cases, we say no than yes. We, you know, we cannot lend to everyone. Unfortunately, we see a lot of underperforming businesses, especially in the current times. As I mentioned, usually the main reasons are uh, poor economics of a business, poor margins, too much operating costs, or sometimes too much debt. You know, if there is too much debt to someone else, we are not the lender who can, you know, in most of the cases, refinance. There are sometimes, you know, we are happy if, to pay back the debt of someone else and, and, and you know, be the lender. Uh, but more often than not, usually this means that the company is really struggling and, and uh, we cannot work together, unfortunately. Okay, that's that's very honest. I mean, you don't, you don't want to fund a, a um, dying business. doesn't make sense yeah, at all. Exactly. Um, where can people find out more about you guys? Uh, I suggest visiting our website, weareuncapped.com. Uh, also, feel free to just email me directly. My email is P-I-O-T-R, so Piotr, at weareuncapped.com. Happy to you know answer any questions personally. Cool. I will put a link in the show notes as always. Before we leave and um, our coffee break ends, give me a bit of a your personal view on how 2023 sort of looking into the glass bowl, how the situation will evolve. Will e-commerce be on the rise or will it be more flatlining for a while? I'm in the long run, I'm very optimistic about the e-commerce. I think you know e-commerce is a future. And uh, you know, now we are having a bit of a rough patch generally as an economy, but I think this means that the clients are also thinking, how can I buy goods more efficiently, cheaply? They, they go online because there's much more choice uh, available. So I'm a huge believer in the e-commerce, generally speaking. And I think that the well-run companies, for them, this is the opportunity of a lifetime because many companies which are not efficient and they struggled are going out of the market. And the, the founders, which are able to scale down the operations, think about the economics, be more careful, they will really reap the rewards of the hard work very soon. Okay, no true words. I think our listeners got far more information out of this interview than just about funding. Um, very solid business info there. Piotr, thanks so much for your time. Uh, it was very interesting. And I will put, as I said, the links in the show notes and then people can reach you directly. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, Klaus here. Before you go, I would like to invite you to become part of the e-commerce Merchant Pro community to get actionable advice from other Shopify merchants who already have achieved what you are aiming for. Our community is a safe place to actively grow your online retail business with the support of the most amazing and helpful group of e-commerce entrepreneurs behind you. Running a Shopify business is tough. Don't do it alone. Join us now. You will find the link in the show notes. Also, if you think your online store has conversion or marketing issues and you would like to have a fresh set of eyes on your business, then drop me an email at klaus at klauslauter.com and let me know a little bit about your business. It might be beneficial for you to have me look over your store, offers, emails, and ads, and get an unbiased outside perspective and guidance to help you mo make most of your online business. Thank you as always for tuning in today. I appreciate you until next time, and I talk to you soon.